of the game. I wouldn't admit to that. Oh, speaking of admitting to making this game... <laughs> uh, what do I talk about? I've kind of complained enough about this game as it is. <laughs> um, I think... I think the biggest problem this game had were the first two words in its name, which Mass Effect, in that it's set in the same world as, as 1, 2, and 3, um, and kind of trying to do its own thing, but with the same kind of characters and the same lore, um, but in a different area, a different, uh, different, different galaxy in um, Andromeda, hence the, the name. But it feels like the um oh, you can pause this that's quite cool but um it, 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 th there were several points where it felt like they were just copying parts of Mass Effect um uh one two and three um like the ending it, it like the big battle is reminiscent of Mass Effect three um the somewhat robotic creature at the end is reminiscent of Mass Effect two um along with some of the Thresher Moors um, that you have to deal with. Um, I think that's three as well. And it, it felt... It felt like it was copying... Um, it, it felt like it was copying the... The kind of... The big hits of one, two, and three. Without having the... Emotional oomph behind it. Um... And I can go through. I could try and talk about the characters. I normally would do this in um, for a Bioware game. You've got so uh, the main character. He feels very much like he's out of his depth, which kind of makes sense. He's on the project almost because his dad is, um, and he becomes a pathfinder because his dad dies, and that's it. And he's out of his depth, and that makes sense. But there's not a lot of. Um, there's there's not a lot of kind of um not a lot of kind of growth there and maybe they were expecting to get another trilogy out of this um so they thought oh you know what we'll only do the one yeah Clancy Brown Woo. um so they only did the one in the hope that that would work out um or no, that's the wrong one I think they kind of did it just in the hope that um. They get the three, and then they can have this character developing over the, over all three. There was meant to be DLC for this game that never ended up coming out because of the response was so negative. Um, but um, I I think like at the end, like he 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 does things that are heroic, but I'm not sure there's much of a, I don't think there's any real point which makes me go he is heroic. Um. Like, at the end, he does a heroic thing, he saves the day, and yet he doesn't come across as a hero. He feels like a player character, which I know sounds really odd, because obviously every game you play, you're playing a player character, but he, I'm not sure how you could transfer um, Ryder's story and have it come across the same way as it does here. Without having to make some changes and make him seem more heroic, maybe that's just me. But let's talk about the companions. Um, so out of um, you have six companions. Um, you have Vetra, who is who I I really did like Vetra. She's she's um, she's a smuggler, but she she's the kind of classic smuggler with a heart of gold kind of shtick. Um, her sisters come along, and so that does affect a lot of her decision making. Um, and I think I really did like her partially because I think she has the best character. She's the best character. Um, but even then, I'm running out of things to say beyond Smuggler with a Heart of Gold. She's got a lot of connections. She does things that are great, have grey legality. Oh. Um, and then. Like, but they ha but she kind of has a kind of set of her own standards of things she will do or won't do, and she is a good character. And I think to some extent maybe she might have been a better player character. 
possibly. Um, and I'm yeah, there's not much else to say about it because even e even the first game, you had more to go on with each character. There was more character development of e from for each character. I, I know it's unfair to compare the characters here to the characters at the end of Mass Effect 3 because many of them had two or three games of character building but like, even Vetra her um, loyalty mission because you have displaced everyone from one galaxy to another there's not a lot of background behind them that you can talk about other than people who have already come so Vetra was basically stuck is this the end? I haven't finished babbling. Um, Vetra is, is stuck dealing with Sid. Um, Cora um, is dealing with the Asari. PB is someone else who's come along. I'm not not entirely sure why they came. Um, uh, Drac, I think, was to do with the Krogan in general. Um, Jarl was to do. I think. I think that was to do with the Angara in general. Um, and I can't even remember what Liam's thing, what Liam's mission was. I mean, that's how memorable these characters are. So, so we, we've done, we've talked about Vetra, but none of them are about their general characters, which is, I think is for me is is the frustration. Is there's very little character in the characters, so there's not much character development, character building, um, and the kind of narrative is, is what I'm doing. Um, while it's happening in the background, it's popping into my head to talk about the music. The music's been good. I mean, the fact I've not pointed out, oh wow, that's not really well fitting, um, tells you that it is brilliantly scored, um, well composed um, uh, music that fits the game, which is what you want. Um, I'm not sure there's any I'd actually sit down and listen to on their own um, that isn't basically the Mass Effect stuff anyway, but there we are. Uh, characters. So we talked about Vetra. Drac, he is a grumpy old Krogan. And I think he's probably the second best character. Um, maybe that's because I spent more time with him. But he has a lot of relations and characters. And uh, okay, we'll stop. I assume that's trying to tell me that there's a new arc on. And to play Mass Effect Andromeda 2 when it comes out. Uh, with Half-Life 3. I'm trying to review this game. Why are the credits so short? <laughs> hey, Sarah. I'm getting too used to this. How long? Weeks. Relax. You haven't missed much. The Ark and the Sleepers, they're safe in the Sphere? Uh, ship is part of Meridian. Uh, safe, sound, and permanent. You better like where we parked, because it's home now. The Sleepers wake to an amazing view. We did it, Dad. What about your implant and Sam? I am once again helping the Pathfinder activate Remnant. Our connection has been restored to normal. Normal. You need him again? Uh, no. Doing it alone hurts too much. I need Sam to make it easier. I was adapting, but damage was being done. We need to be careful, Sarah. The Nexus leaders are waiting, Pathfinder. Duty calls. Better not keep them waiting. It never ends. I'm really confused. It, are these new tasks? I don't want new tasks. I just wanna. I just wanna talk. Okay, I'm, I'll talk about the characters and see what's going on. Ooh, epilogue. That sounds cool. Okay, let's actually see what missions we've got. Okay, so it's just talk to people. Okay, we'll we'll run around and talk to people. Um, actually, yeah, I can talk about people as I come to them. Oh, they're not even on the map. Okay, that's disappointing. The decision isn't yours. Neither is it yours. That is the point, isn't it? Pathfinder, you're late. Uh, I can't get a day off. <laughs> Save the cluster, straight back to work. 
I get it. It must seem like that, but this wouldn't be possible without you. As outposts become colonies, the cluster needs its own voice, a true council. And while I maintain that it is premature, we must nominate an interim ambassador to represent concerns outside the Nexus. Or rather, you must nominate someone. Uh, the position? Interim ambassador? To what and for who? To the Nexus. The eventual goal was always a galactic council, but Meridian has accelerated concerns. An Ark has landed. The vaults may make outposts self-sufficient, and we can't claim to represent a sovereign Angara. Yes. An interim ambassador would represent concerns outside the Nexus until elections when we can all step aside. At the appropriate time. Mm, shouldn't there be a vote? If this person is supposed to represent people, Shouldn't the people have a say? Addison's already discussed that. That is precisely that. why we need your backing. We can't impose a vote on the Angara. Or even Kadara. Eladin? Won't happen. But you've acted for everyone. If you endorse a name, some may disagree. But they will trust it as a starting point. Someone to speak for Helios. I put forward Pathfinder Hager. I'd suggest you, but someone might think you killed the Archon to elevate yourself. We can't allow the appearance of that. But Hager keeps the position, and the timeline, in the Nexus family. Uh, an outpost to leave. Ooh. I don't like the idea of Nexus family. <sighs> yeah, I'm not sure I like that. That feels wrong. And if you want to talk about kind of the visuals of it, I'm not a fan. Uh, give the Krogan a voice. Yes, they're well known for the diplomacy abilities. Uh, the most shy. I think we're the most shy. Maybe Angara, the most shy. The Angara need to help define the process. It's their right. Plus, the most shy would help solidify relations. We're already partnered, thanks to your efforts against the Rokar. All the more reason to focus on our own issues. Uh, okay, so I can I could say for each go for each one. But I think if it's kind of this group talking to her as well. Like, that's the thing, is it, is, is the ambassador kind of someone come, no, I'm gonna, I'm sticking with the Moshai. If we're going to treat Helios like a home, we need to acknowledge whose home it is. Says the British guy. I won't name anyone. I support asking the Moshai to act as interim ambassador. Meridian's opening day, and we're surrendering how much influence? That's the point, you colonial ward. You know it's bad when an Englishman is saying. Good. This decision, the policy and protocol, that's not what your victory was about. There's more to life than this. I hope. Right, so, <clears throat> who was I up to? Drac. So, Drac is... He's a good character, but he, again, he's just kind of a standard old Krogan. Where am I going? Pathfinder. I'll pay it forward. I swear. I have no idea who you are. Oh no, memorial. Okay, so I'll finish talking about Drac. <gasps> There's Jarl! Where is everyone? Okay, so <clears throat> Jarl. Um Ooh, maybe I could talk about So the Ingar in general I quite like. They're different in some ways. In kind of sufficient ways to make them their own thing. But um I mean, I maybe it's just because I, I I did limited stuff with them. I don't know where to start, but, I can. but I'm not sure exactly like much about the Angara. Like I couldn't tell you m as much about the Angara. If people, I I couldn't. If people ask me a set of questions about the races from one, two, and three, again, three games to to give them background. And the Angara, I'd probably be able to answer le the fewest questions about the Angara, just because. There's not much. There's not as much about them, and but even and even though they're in only one game, you've got to think the Asari, um, the Krogan, the Churians, and the Quarians, the kind of big four, and and the kind of human expansion from now from or influence history from now forward. That's five races you've got to get through in three games. This is just one you're introducing, with admittedly with little bits about the others for those who are joining at Andromeda. Uh, which, my goodness, I hope they wouldn't do that. Um, Joel is kind of a... He seems like... Is your day good? I don't know, I'm, I'm babbling. Um, he, he seems like a, a kind of a general good guy. Like, you could see him as a basic character in, in any RPG, as 
a good guy. Um, I think they used him and the Rokar quite well. Like, I, th I think I'm kind of thinking maybe I don't know what to do. Like, his position in the Resistance is important, but. It sh well, it probably should have been more important. I think, and I think that's the problem: is a lot of these characters have certain aspects to them that you think that's a really important aspect. Why didn't they use it more? And I think that that's that's a problem with a few people. <laughs> so this is how you all party. Hmm? <laughs> Pretty tame, but don't tell the host I said that. Meridian is amazing, though. You. Accomplished the inconceivable. I'm grateful to be part of it. I'm grateful too. No, I'm grateful. I couldn't have asked for a better team. We created this together. And exactly what it is, what it may become, <laughs> I can't even imagine. To think that when we met, the Angara and your initiative struggled to find trust. The way we arrived on Aya was over the top. You know, uninvited and on fire. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Guess it worked out okay. <sighs> Ryder, the Angara will never forget how you saved the Moshrai. But more than that, we'll never forget how you fought the Ket beside us. How we destroyed the Archon. Meridian is a new beginning for your people and mine. Agreed. Together. New beginnings. That's what I came to Helios for. And what I dreamed of. Yes. <laughs> new beginnings. So, let's get to it. <laughs> 